Throughout the event and these past two days, we've been asking you who are attending here and everyone watching actually, what you'd like to see from Gabby in the future. What you think we can do better? What do you think we should be talking about? Here's a selection of what you told us. Take a look. Being here in the presence of all this greatness is truly an honor and a privilege. And we need people that are gonna be taking actionable things, actionable steps, and not just being here to talk. So I'm all about action, and hopefully everybody else that's watching this will be about action too. So by this time next year, I would love to see at Gabby more young girls attending the conference. I know we have a lot of beautiful adult people here every single time, but we we'll would love to see some young girls in the room as well, seeing the brilliance that is of Unstoppable Africa. I hope that those who attended this event, will, the organizers will supply the names and contacts to all of us so that we can network better and more effectively in between the Gabby conferences. Okay, for the next Gabby, I would like to see more creative individuals in these conference rooms. So much great work that's going on, but many Africans never hear these stories because they're not in these rooms. Let's find a way, Gabby, to have a social media engagement which goes to the average person. I would love to see a big announcement, a long-term announcement, that continues to see investment into the creative sector that allows Africans to create a narrative uh, that reflects who they are in the world. I want to see that there have been more opportunities for collaboration this year that will be translated into actions when we go back to our country. I would love to see and hear the voices of the youth from Africa. So uh, the 16, the 17 year olds who are thinking and endeavoring to change their lives in the world, I would love to see them here, to hear their voices, and to see how they're imagining a world that's different than the one we have today. At the next Gabi, I would like to see more opportunities where we can frame problems, bring the right people at the table, uh, co-create solutions, and then walk away with very clear, tangible, and actionable uh, interventions that we will track uh, for the following events that we'll have. So it was an honor to be at the Gabi conference. It's always great to to be to see these individuals and this high net worth, you know, organizations and people working together. But what I want to see from the next Gabby conference is from these connections that were made here, that there's some action and execution. Because you know, for the longest we always speak about Africa is coming. Now it's time to see what Africa has. Thank you. We heard about action and accountability. We're shifting the narrative, it's time to act. Build a network and make connections beyond this conference. Make Gabby a central hub for connection. Extend Gabby's reach, use social media, as we heard, to bring Gabby to those that can't be here in New York with us and bring Gabby to Africa as well. Hear more from young Africans. We heard that too, they don't wanna see us old folks here. <laughs> they want more, more young voices. So integrate and link the next generation more to shape Gabby's work. Thank you everyone for your great feedback. The discussions and debates over the past two days have highlighted Africa's new and prominent role in the world order. But they've also emphasized the challenges that we face in seizing the day. Can we do it? Well, the theme of this event is Unstoppable Africa. And the answer to that question is, we can, we must, and we shall. It's been an absolute pleasure to, pleasure to be your host these past two days. Really. It, was, it was very different from what I usually do, but so pleased to be amongst my people and to see the, the great things that we're accomplishing. Thank you so much. Before I ask the DSG to come and close this year's Gabi for us, I'd like to invite Sanda Odiambo, Odiambo the Executive uh, Director of Global Compact, to say a few words of thanks because there are a lot of people behind the scenes who've done so much to put this event together and we have to acknowledge them. Sanda, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
thank you, everybody. First, let's give a real big shout out to Folly for leading us through these two days. So much energy and enthusiasm. Thank you, Folly. Thank you. Thank you, Folly. We couldn't have done it without you. So there's a long list of people that have helped keep Gabby alive since our first um, convening last year. And many who, as we've seen on the screen, so are so keen for us to make sure that Gabby sails into the future. I truly hope that I don't miss out any of you as I, I attempt to do this grouping here. But first, let me start with um, the Deputy Secretary General, uh, Amina Mohammed. Diestri, thank you so much for your vision, for your confidence, your trust, your push, your belief in the African continent, which I know you truly do believe in, and um, for inspiring us. Uh, for Gabby, just thank you, thank you. Um, I'd like to thank a number of people, some who are not in the room because they're so busy working behind the scenes and they've been at it from, uh, they've been at it from when we started setting up uh, late, you know, the night before the event. So I just wanna say thank you to all of you, the unseen people who are behind the scenes, from camera to sound, to content, to production. Um, to all of you, really, thank you so very much. We also have thought partners who've helped us shape the sessions, put together content for the sessions, drive the discussion and the narrative. Thank you to you, too. Um, lots of teams across the UN system I'd just like to thank, not only the Global Compact teams, but partners from the Office of the Special Advisor for Africa, UNDP, Sustainable Energy for All, um, the International Trade Center, the International Telecommunications Union, uh, so many partners, UNEP, who've helped us bring together Gabi, bring the best of what we know within the UN system to partner with the private sector to really lift this agenda. So let me give a shout out also to our UN colleagues as well. <laughs> a dear group of friends and, and supporters and business leaders who came to stand by and build the foundation for, for Gabby. We call it the Gabby Circle. They've popped in and out of the sessions. They've given us their feedback. They continue to inspire us with their bold private sector leadership for Africa. We just want to thank the Gabby Circle. We know they'll continue to grow, but they've been instrumental in pushing Gabby forward. Um, I'd like to personally thank my team at the Global Compact. Um, I think they've put in a lot of work hours, man hours, uh, driving forward on a lot of um, operational pieces here supporting, running the events alongside our other partners. And I just really want to thank them for everything that they've done to put together. So thank you, Global Compact team as well. It's been absolutely great. Um, I'd like to thank the audience also for being here, for attending, for, for cheerleading, for being in all of the sessions and, and giving us great feedback, not just what we've seen on the screen, but feedback online, feedback in the corridors. Without you, of course, the rooms would not be full. So thank you so very much to all of the audience as well. Uh, last but not least, there's a team of production providers who have worked with us tirelessly to bring Gabby to life. Um, again, I may not be able to mention all of you. Uh, at the risk of sounding like the true Kenyan that I am, I have a dear sister, Zane Vergy from Kenya, who's also worked alongside us. Zane, I know you're backstage somewhere, but thank you so much to you and all of the teams as well for all that you've done to put us together. And then finally, I'd just like to thank also, and you know, they're not present right now, we've gotten lots of support from heads of state and government. I truly wanna thank the African Union for standing with us from the very beginning and keeping this true vision of the Africa we want through to 2063 alive. So many thanks to the African Union for the support that they continue to give us on this endeavor. And I think with that, and if I've missed anybody, please ex accept our most sincere thanks. I'd like to hand over to the Deputy Secretary General, DSG, Amina Mohammed. Thank you. Get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they didn't do it for me yesterday, so they got it right today. But this is great to see everyone here and uh, just from this side to that side and the middle of me and, and all those who are watching and have been with us for the last two days. It's fantastic to be here at the closing. I almost don't want it to close. We have a UN General Assembly week and what we say we do is speed date because of one thing to another, it's back to back. Um, but this has been 
a continuous stream of feedback that I've been getting in the UN. And it's from people, not just from this room, but people who actually come back into the UN and say, we were just at this event, and did you hear about this idea? Did you hear the conversation that we had with four different people, and it was with one president, and he's still going? And it, it's, it was fantastic feedback. Um, Africa was certainly in the room. Africa was in New York this week. So thank you very much for making that happen. The African Union, our speakers, uh, the Gabby Circle, business leaders, attendees, and the mayor of New York, those of you who heard him yesterday, um, as well as our sponsors and organizers, they, they didn't just come to the event. I think they truly came with ideas uh, that they want us to take out of this event. Everything that I've heard today is something that can be followed up on. And we hope that the rooms that we had given um, at the back there that would help that. And I think so. I think that we didn't want this to stop in New York. We want to go back to Africa. And of course, the network across the world, because uh, Africa doesn't stop at our borders. What we intend to do is to be the center of the world. And if you look at all the maps, except one uh, that, that, that one country does, we are the center of the world. We are the birthplace. We are certainly Mother Africa. And, and, and no, nobody forget that. No apologies. So it, it's really um, fantastic to be here. I want to thank our Secretary General as well, because when this idea came and uh, Strive Masio and I said, well, let's try to do this and do it with the African Union for 2063, but also 2030, and that gatherings happen here um, every year, and we need to be a central part of that, because actually the agenda for the international community and development is Africa. Uh, and without it, I often say that we wouldn't have a paycheck. Uh, we, want, we would like to do people out of the paycheck, but maybe a paycheck that does things differently, and that's partner, um, and that says that we exited from that development to one in which there was a great partnership um, of, building, uh, of building out Africa, of building out um, the rest of our partnerships. We're halfway through to the Sustainable Development Goals, and when we negotiated them, the African Union was the first um, of the regions, and probably the only of the regions that did its 10-year plan to actually implement the 2030 Agenda. If anyone reads the 2063 Agenda, it's actually more ambitious than the International Agenda. So that 10-year plan for which we now have the second one um, is really an important metric for us to see how we're doing. And when we all landed in um, New York, or you all landed in New York this week to do that, we had a miserable 15% um, pass, which is not pass, it's failure. Um, and that's all we had got at the target. So we've got seven years to go, and, and that's not very long. It's just round the corner. And that summit, reflecting on the progress, what we really wanted to focus on were the solutions. Many solutions were spoken about here. Many solutions were spoken about on the podium when each head of state has given um, their uh, statement to the world. Um, and many were spoken in some of those um, places and spaces that we brought stakeholders together across the weekend, from women's groups to young people, to people with disabilities, others that are, are not seen um, uh, in, in, in many of our discussions. So there was a global moment, and that for us was vital for Africa. The continent, of course, we've heard, we face multiple challenges, and, and there's enough grief to talk about, but I think we need to own it, and it is with the potentials that we show here that we create those islands of stability and we just grow them. So we grow out the conflict, we grow out all the misery that people talk about rather than when are we going to invest um, in Africa. No, we just, we already started, we grow it out. I was listening to um, our, creative, our creatives and, and um, the garment industry. It's amazing what you're doing in Rwanda. And I was thinking, you know, does, do people, or people my age probably remember when H&M came about, but um, that should be a point when, Ashanti, when did, that, when did that come about? We should all remember it and think that this is not about the here and now. It's about those that will be using it year after year after year, and it's a really big name um, that no one thinks about, oh, well, this is from Africa. No, this is a global brand. Not many people say H&M Sweden. It's H&M, and it's global. So that's exactly what we want to see with the brands that we have here. So as we're drawing the curtain on the second global um, Africa Business Initiative, the Unstoppable Africa that we want, we, we were looking at the name and saying, do we take away Unstoppable and put something else on it? Um, no, I don't think so. I think that, you know, we, we, we want a certain bit of aggro, right? We want people to feel a little uncomfortable when we say Unstoppable and here we come. Uh, because this is it, you know, we're big, we're noisy, 
Um, we're beautiful, um, and we're going to be unstoppable, and we have no apologies to it. So we're still unstoppable Africa. And we already got a commitment. Yesterday, um, I got a commitment from one of our big institutions in Africa to say that when I said to them, you know, maybe we should prepare this, this meeting in Africa rather than in our offices in New York and we draw on the UN system. The UN system is also in Africa. So why don't we prepare this meeting in Africa and have a meeting in Africa before we come to the world? And we have one of our uh, big institutions in Africa who has said they will bankroll that. So I want to thank people for <laughs> believing in Africa and, and that we'll do it. And we, we will do it um, together with the African Union, but we'll do it at the side of the second African Union meeting. We have one at the beginning of the year, we have one in the middle of the year that talks about what we do at the regions. And this is really important for us. So whichever country they're in, that's where we're going. And so we'll see you there before we come to September. It'll probably be in July. And I know that my minders are probably saying, why is she talking about this? Well, I just want to make sure. <laughs> I just want to make sure I, sh I share the secret <laughs> um, with you all because I want you there. Um, it's not just to New York we come. Wherever we are in Africa, let's go and let's make that um, happen. I know that you know that we've discussed a whole range of issues that will define our trajectory, and, and we did focus on many that matter for us to get into the future, food systems, energy, the IT. But for me, um, the one that meant the most was about the creatives, because this is where women and young people are. It's where technology is going to come, and it's going to take us beyond the moon. Um, but it is the place where we have never really recognized the GDP and the creatives. And so let's honor that. Let's do that. It makes money, and it's really good. And you do it having fun. It's hard work, I know. I know it's hard work. Um, but, you know, this is a part of um, the world where I think my... Uh, my brother here said to me that his, his kids told him that, you know, it's really cool to be Nigeria, Nigerian now. I think many of us didn't, a little, a little while ago, it wasn't so cool to be Nigerian. Uh, we all knew it because we were all very defensive about it. Um, you know, one in four Nigerians, we are Nigerian and we're not going away anywhere. And you saw us on the stage yesterday and we're here today. And his kids are saying it's cool to be Nigerian in the world today. And why is that top musicians, top selling musicians are? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, and, and so that's the story we want, is that when everyone points to Africa, they point to our success. Um, and as I said, we have a lot of work to do on the others. We own the other problems that we have. We're not good at keeping the peace right now. We're not good at protecting our women. We are not good at democracy. Um, we're, we're so many things we're not good at, but we are going to get better because there is this community that will check those balances and we will move the other way, giving people an alternative to it. Because if we invested in people to begin with, we never would have had Boko Haram. We just wouldn't have had. I grew up in Medugri. I went to school. I'm not a terrorist. I'm the Deputy Secretary General of Nigeria. You know? <laughs> Please. <laughs> And we can say that all around, from Somalia, you know, to DRC, we can, we can tell our stories, and, and our stories are great. Uh, so it's, it's been a real pleasure to, to see that we are going to bring to life many of the aspirations that our heads of state and government have actually put on paper, and we are going to take them into a, a reality. We're also putting fire under the feet of our leaders. I think we saw leaders from Africa in this room uh, in the last two days that really showed us that they could step up to the plate. And we've had leaders that we know who may not have been in this room who are stepping up. So in the 54, we got some. Um, and if they can spread the virus of good leadership, that would be amazing. Because then, you know, 54 countries would stand up and we would stand with them, uh, behind them, in front of them, propelling them, whatever it is, then leadership would have followership and not when they look back and they wonder where we all are, well, we're not going down their road. Uh, that's, a, that's a major message to so much leadership that isn't delivering uh, for, for the world today, isn't delivering in Africa. Unconstitutional changes are unconstitutional changes. Um, but we do have to ask why, right? Especially when they happen to be popular and everyone comes on the street and says, this is, this is really good. Well, I tell you, I come from a country where we had coups. When they said, fellow Nigerians, <laughs> we ran inside and we waited to see who was coming. And then slowly, slowly, we emerged. But to see that there are coup d'etats on the continent today where people are celebrating, we have to check what it is that we're doing wrong. Because surely, that's not a good thing. 
So I, I hope that message goes back to, to everyone and, and that we do that. I, I want to end by saying that um, we all have a lot of work and commitments to do individually. Just think about what it is that you're taking home, um, what it is that you will ask uh, the networks that you all belong to, uh, to join you in doing. Not everything can we do alone. We, we have to carry people with us. That's the commitment I'm making, is that I go back and I say, this is what I heard from Africans to all the resident coordinators I have in the 54 countries. And each one of them has a country team that maybe has 20, 30, 40 UN agencies. Our job is to convene for the progress of Africa. It is to convene to 2063 for 2030. And so that's what I'd like to think that when we go back, we will convene for many of the conversations that you've had today uh, to make them happen. And we'll come back next year to say that we harvested this from this event. Let it not just be an event where we network, that's important, where we talk, where we eat together, um, and uh, let it be something that says, well, I can tell you that out of this, I signed up this deal. I met up this person who opened up the market for me in this country. And when I was in Rwanda the other day, a lot of young people saying to me, could you please open the market to Nigeria? Because that's where the creatives for fashion, for music, if I can sell that there, then I've got business going. So let's actually cross these borders that don't necessarily need you to fly across them. And I know the airline thing is not working too well, but it will. Um, we don't need to. If we get the technology right, we will cross borders without doing so. We will plug and play Africa the way it should be. Um, Sander, Zane, Foley, um, I, I, I didn't, didn't have a male name to call. Um, and I have no apologies for that either because these are three fantastic women who stood up and worked 24-7. Um, and, and I was a really hard taskmaster. I'm, I'm a dreadful person to work for. I really am. And I'm very sorry. And, you know, forgive me, but, you know, I will do it again because we deserve the, <laughs> we deserve the best in Africa. We will not, as they say, Nigeria, no, they come last, you know. So we're not, going to, we're not going to be last. We're going to be first. We're going to be center. Um, and I just want to say that women's leadership, it's not about numbers. It's about the capacity, the intellect, the guts, the inclusion uh, that they all use to bring all of us along. And so to, to men, it's not shoving you out. It's like I said last night, just move a little to the right and we'll step in. And that partnership will take us further. It'll take us further because we will end conflicts. It'll take us further because we will understand better how we take everyone with us, and not just a few. It'll take us further because we will show the depth and the breadth of what we can do in Africa. So, um, men, you wouldn't be here if a woman hadn't given birth to you. <laughs> it was tough, and they do, and you're wonderful, and we love you, but, um, you know, take us with you. So on that, that note, um, thank you so much. I don't want to leave the stage because it means I have to say, you know, goodbye, but I'll say to be continued, to be continued next year and the year after and the year after, day after day. Thank you.